Good morning, good afternoon. It's good to be with you all for the last of our February topics on love and romantic relationship. So the theme this month has been really, how are we looking outside of ourselves for love and safety and comfort and joy and pleasure? And I think people want to punch me when I say that we can be getting all of that from within ourselves. We can get that safety and that refuge and that deep inner connection and that inner strength and the connection to love and feeling like we matter and that we're seen and we're heard, even though we're looking to our human relationships for that that's all built within us. We have the capacity to curl inward. And that's why I think the yogic path is so full of profound wisdom. Because if you dig into the spiritual aspects of yoga, that's all it is. It's curling inward to ourselves. Now, I've just consciously made the shift from the divine outside of me to the divine within me. Um, and I'm not saying that there's an order of that, but it always felt like it was, I had to grasp it and pull it in. And over the last few years for me, maybe five to seven years, I've curled into myself. And there's a few ways that we can do this. But we can connect with the sacredness, the divinity, the, the aloe on the wounds from the space within us that's already wired in us. In yoga, they call it ananda maya kosha, the bliss layer of the body. And like, who doesn't want a little bliss? But bliss isn't about like temporary excitement and euphoria. Bliss is about staying so anchored in the sacred, divine, juicy frequencies that we already are so that anything, any human experience is a nice to have, but it's not the main dish. It's not the meal. Because the meal is like a cornucopia of that which no human could ever bring to our lives. So if that seems ridiculous or impossible, what I could say is that most of us are looking to our partners to be God, to be the mother that we never had, to be that aloe on our wound, but we're flawed humans. And all we know is how to love conditionally because we're not enlightened yet. We all have conditions and fear and separation that we go into in our human relationships. It's called the human condition. No one's exempt to that. And even if someone has a really strong fawn pattern and it looks like they love you and care about you so much, chances are there's some fears within themselves that they're playing out through the love relationship. I'm not saying that all love is tainted. I'm just saying all love is human. And what we can expect in our human relationships is fear and our own stuff to play out. And, and if we go to our relationships expecting, oh, I'm going to get lessons on where love is not yet anchored in me. That's how I see my marriage, to be honest with you. I don't see my marriage as the place where I get all my needs met. I see my marriage as the place of to reflect to me where my soul is still yet healed, not healed or where I haven't healed my alignment with my soul. I see every one of my relationships as a reflection of what's still, where I'm still not anchored in love. And so what if we stopped putting all this pressure on our human relationships and instead got the needs met within ourselves such that the cup overflow and that anything we exchange with other humans in our life is from the overflow of the well of love that's generated from our connection to ourselves. So what does that mean in all practicality? We need to go into a practice so you can feel this. This is a practice that we do with ourselves every day. It's not something we just say, I love myself. I love myself. I accept my body. I love my body. I accept my body. That doesn't work. You've tried that. 
Why doesn't that work? Because we have all these trauma packets that say otherwise. So how do we transcend where the mind is not yet wired or where the trauma packets and the body says you're not lovable? What the hell do you think you are? So if we have a mind that's unwired or trauma packets that are saying contrary to love, then where is the love? It's in our hearts. It's in our sacred heart space. It's in our connection to our Christed consciousness or our divine consciousness. That's literally programmed in the DNA within ourselves. It's literally piped straight in through the divine consciousness that's wired into our sacred heart space. So let me give you an intellectual description of that. And then we're just going to journey in so that you can have an experience of that. Two inches behind your physical heart is your sacred heart space. There's a cave there. And no matter what tradition you look at, there, there are hints to the soul flame or to this space in the heart. Follow your heart. Lead from your heart. Listen to your heart. Heart Math Institute has already measured the field around the heart and what happens to that field when we're in feelings of love and appreciation and care versus one of fear and separation. So this is becoming measurable, although science minds can start to get on board. But this is something the yogis have known for thousands of years. So with that, in two inches behind our physical heart is the Hrit Padma Chakra, the sacred heart space. In your sacred heart space, your soul flame lives. Your soul flame is piped straight from the heart of divine source. No matter what you think that is, the cosmos, the grand central sun, your I am presence, God with a gray beard in the sky, whatever you believe, the archangels, the ascended masters, pick one, anyone. Whatever feels easiest for you to believe that that sacred light comes from, piped like a gas stove straight into your sacred heart space. And our work is to take that little flame and expand it and expand it and expand it and to pull from it the violet consuming flame, the green flame of healing, the white flame of ascension in this sacred flame within our hearts is our sacred light. Are you connecting with it? Are you circulating it? Are you commanding it to heal your liver or to heal your gut or to heal your whatever? How are you working with the divine frequencies that are already within yourself? That's our work. And then from there, in that space, we can connect with a form of the divine. The divine has no form. It is the formless. Any form we choose is going to be a, 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 a chosen form, and the light will, will assemble into that form for us to have a human projected relationship on the divine. So just pick one that feels the easiest for you to get wrap your head around. The divine light will form into whatever frequency, male, female, Kuan Yin, Jesus, Buddha, Archangel Michael, you name it. You choose it so that you can project onto that form and that you can project the receiving of the love from that form. Maybe you feel it when you're in a forest and so your sacred heart feels like a forest or the ocean. That's okay too. The work is to be able to love in that space and to practice that frequency. So because like attracts like, and the more that you stay in that heart frequency, the more you anchor it into yourself and the more you anchor it into yourself, the more you can generate it without after we even having to think about this. We know this about gratitude, right? If I wire myself to gratitude, then in the times that I need it, it's right there. Same is true for the feeling of love. Love is a frequency that we generate from within ourselves, from the sacredness of our hearts. It doesn't come from outside of us. 
And if we don't have it and we show up into our human relationships expecting to have our empty cup filled, we will always be disappointed because we won't be able to attract that sacred oneness of love from our partner because we're coming at it from a deficiency-based vibration. Isn't that the kicker? We have to feel the love and generate the love and bring it to our relationships so that we can attract it from our relationships. Are there any questions about that? So if we look at our relationship, we're like, you're not paying attention to me. You're not present to me. You're not loving me the way I know. That's not my love language. What we can do is generate the love within our hearts, the bliss and the connection to ourselves, which is a curled inward stance. And from that, we radiate that out. It's no longer an exchange or a currency. It is our base state. And what happens through the law of resonance is those who can hang with that vibration, who resonate with that, will stay. And those who cannot live in a more fifth dimensional heart-based frequency will be irritated because you're happy or that they just won't be able to hang. And that is the universe sorting things out based on the law of resonance. And that's okay. That's why when we spiritually awaken and up level, we get a clearing out. We're like, wait, why is everyone leaving? Because not everybody is at the consciousness to be able to be in that vibration. It doesn't mean you're better or worse. It just doesn't fit anymore. And we can love that on the way out. We don't have to make up stories about anything. We can just love that and honor that. So this is the work. And let's go in and do it, okay? So I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to have you go into a glass elevator at the center of your head. And I want you to like literally see your brain and see the inside of your head. And then I'm going to take you into your neck. And then I'm going to take you into Hrit Padma, which is not the heart chakra. It's a sub chakra off of the heart. It's behind your physical heart, between your physical heart and your spine. There's a cave there. The constant in everybody's cave is their soul flame, whether it looks like a fireplace or a campfire or an altar with a, with a candle, a fire on it, whatever that looks like for you. And we're going to sit in that space and we're going to use that flame. And then we're going to let the divine show up. And then we're going to sit with the divine and receive the love. Most people who are good at giving love and our caretakers have not practiced sitting and receiving love. You may feel your imagination, which is your right brain or your spiritual tools. If this is new for you, just stay with it. Closing your eyes and coming into your breath. We're going to use a mantra just a few times to get into the right brain. It's called Aham Prema. I am divine love. Aham Prema. 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 Last one. Aham Prema. Deep breath into your belly and your chest. 
exhale, anchor into your legs and your feet. Another deep breath here. A nice slow exhale. Last one. On the next breath, imagine yourself going into the glass elevator at the center of your head, at your third eye. You might have a torch, a violet flame torch with you as you enter into this glass elevator. Just look around this space as you go to the center of your head. You may see your pineal gland, the upside down pine cone nearby. And as you breathe into this space, gaze down toward the space of the neck. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, journey down, down into the neck, down, down, down. And as you feel yourself journey into the space of the neck, just gaze around the space, noticing how different it is from the space within the head. And as you gaze downward to the space behind the physical heart, take a nice deep breath here. And begin the descent down into the space behind your physical heart, outside of your sacred heart cave. Down, down, down. Taking the elevator to the space just outside of that heart cave. Once you arrive here, feel the sacred stillness in this space and exit the elevator into your sacred heart cave. As you walk into the cave, just notice how it feels. Is it covered in velvet or is it crystalline? And if you will, go straight to your sacred flame. having a seat or laying down next to this sacred fire within your heart. Begin to unpack all of your burdens, setting them into the flame for transmutation, purification, whatever relationships or situations have been weighing heavy on you. And just lay, if you will, next to that sacred fire, allowing yourself to fully relax into this refuge. Staying connected to your breath, drawing the flame into the spaces in your body or your emotions that need healing. You might see the green flame go into the spaces of your body that need healing. You may feel the violet flame transmuting the fear or the interference in your life, your emotions your mind. You may feel that pink flame of divine love 
pouring sacred love into your heart. Just let the colors of the fire work on you without needing to know. Just receiving. And as you receive that fire, allow yourself to feel the divine curl up next to you, whatever form shows up. You may feel the divine place their hands on your heart, your head. And as you do that, just receive the profound love and care. You don't have to give anything back right now, just receive the love, the safety, connection. The truth. The power. Feel yourself fully surrendered into receiving. Feel the divine offering you their love. I love you. I love you. I love you. And feel yourself offering your love. I love you, divine. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. I love you, divine. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. I love you, divine. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Just see if you can feel that in every cell of your body. The sweet nectar of the divine love pouring at you. Try not to judge whether you can receive it or not. Just allow wherever you're at. and ask for the assistance to continue to open yourself to this love, to expand your heart, to be love incarnate, 
I am the divine love. I am divine love. I am. As you feel this, breathe this love into all of your cells. Let every cell feel this love, this sacred divine love that you are, that you embody. Let the chalice within your heart start to overflow into your physical body into your thoughts and your feelings. Feel it ripple into your pranic body, your chakras, this sacred love. And if you will, seal that love with the depth of gratitude for how easy, how available this love is at your beck and call. Just feel that there are legions of light and light beings and masters and angels just waiting for you to ask for love. Give it a try right now. Open yourself. Say, okay, I'm ready for that love. Bring it on. And just notice what happens in your energy field when you do that. They are waiting for your call for love. So as you allow and receive that love, receive it through your back body, your head, your feet, your arms. Feel like butterflies around you, the light pouring in. As you breathe in, it just absorbs into your cells, to your atoms. And then as you exhale, you can feel it anchoring in. I am the divine love. Deep bow to the divine, deep gratitude to all the beings of light and the angels and the masters or the sun and the trees. And if you will, seal this in this moment by allowing yourself to know that this is the most real thing. This is real and true. By saying, and so it is, and so it is done. So it is done. Just notice if there's anything in your mind that wants to argue it and send that into the violet flame. You don't have to entertain the thoughts of but, or I'm not worthy, or I was told. Send that straight to the violet flame and stay so completely connected to this truth. And just imagine going into your romantic relationships or any other relationship with this fullness. Sharing it, co-creating it, multiplying it. Versus coming into your relationships deficient in this. And so it is. 